All right, really quickly, guys. So we're talking tonight about um, AP Lang, all three essays, essentially, because the rhetorical triangle, the foundation of argument, applies to all three essays. When you're writing your own essay that you're going to submit to College Board for grading, think about this for your audience. Assume they're an educated audience, so your readers in June this year will be um, English AP teachers or college professors. So both are very good at this stuff. However, do not assume that your reader has extensive background knowledge in, in whatever the topic is. Even if they do, they're, they're going to play act, they're going to act like they don't have extensive knowledge because it's your job to connect the dots. So let's say our speech that we're analyzing is, um, I have a dream by Martin Luther King. Wouldn't that be lucky? All right, so if that's the speech that we're analyzing, of course my reader knows a lot about uh, the 1960 civil rights movement, but you're going to connect a lot of the dots for them. So you, that's what we're going to practice um, this year is connecting the dots. How much is too much? How much is too little of that background knowledge to assume? We're not going to focus on that today, but definitely something to think about this year. So in general, you don't know who your audience is. It's a wide open audience. It's, but you should be writing your three essays as if they were written to many, many people, not just a student in your class, not me, not your teacher, not just one random reader in Florida. All right, which is where they do their AP grading. So let's talk about soapstone. Soapstone is an essential part of AP language and composition. I want to take a couple minutes here to walk through it. You should not be like filling out soapstone charts for long. You, you're, a lot of you are probably doing them in class. I've done that in my class for sure um, already this year. But really, when you stop, when you scaffold away from a soapstone chart, if, if you do use one, um, never forget the foundation of argument according to soapstone. So with all of that said, everybody, let's walk through soapstone and why it's so important and why it's such a critical part to um, our course this year. So the parts of, the, uh, of soapstone are speaker, occasion, audience, purpose, subject, and tone. If your teacher uses this acronym or not, these are the components of every argument I want you thinking about. And that's actually what we're going to practice today, uh, and I'll tell you how that relates to the rhetorical triangle. With that said, um, when I'm, I don't have my students fill out the chart a lot, but I always am talking about these pieces and thinking about these pieces. Even before I read a word of the author, I'm thinking about speaker, occasion, audience, purpose, subject, tone. All right, as it relates to the rhetorical triangle, we are uh, focusing on speaker, audience, subject. So half of soapstone is the rhetorical triangle we talked about. So those are certainly three key elements. And again, I'm focusing on the connection between every element of that. That's what separates us from average um, analysis. All right, so the other two that I really want to emphasize, and that I emphasize in my classroom a lot, uh, is the relationship between occasion and subject. That's when you bring in your own background knowledge. So let's stick on what we talked about, 1960s, and let's say we're talking about the civil rights movement somehow. For example, it could be, I have a dream by Martin Luther King. If we're analyzing that, I'm not thinking about racism. I'm thinking, that's the subject, right? I'm thinking about racism relating to the occasion. The occasion of the work is why the work is written. So in the 1960s, that occasion is different than talking about racism in 2018. Racism could still be my subject, but the occasion is going to be different. Likewise, if I'm talking in 1776, I could still be talking about racism, but the occasion is going to be different. So I'm always thinking, what is the occasion of the work? So if it's I have a dream, we know the occasion of that. It was a civil rights movement. It was ending um, like segregation and racism in America in the 1960s. That's what's happening at the time of the writing. So guys, this is all about what's happening at the time of the writing, not in 2018, unless it's about to, like, unless it's written in 2018. All right, the most important ingredient of soapstone, though, is purpose. So you can see I've highlighted occasion, subject, speaker, audience, subject, purpose, pretty much everything. These are all important, but the purpose is the most important piece. If I haven't identified the purpose, I have not read at a high enough level. I'm not ready to analyze. So I'm talking here, of course, reading someone else's argument. 
I have to read with this in mind the most. I'm thinking about the occasion. I'm thinking about the rhetorical triangle before I read. While I read, I'm really focusing on, am I getting the author's primary purpose here?